The kingdom will totally, I mean totally, transform your life. There was laws I could learn to anchor my life. That's what Faith Hunt is all about. Welcome to Faith Hunt. This is hunting season and this is a crossbow. It is my favorite crossbow. It is a powerful crossbow, over 400 feet per second. It's a Barnett 400 Ghost. It's a great, great crossbow. But you know what? You can have the best bow, the best equipment, and come home empty handed. You know, I remember several years ago, I was out in my tree stand and I was anticipating the deer coming in. I'd sowed my seed. I believed God for the, the deer to come in. And sure enough, in about 30 minutes, I see this deer wandering through the woods right towards my tree. It's a perfect classic faith hunt picture. The deer walks up within 20 yards, does not spot me. I'm in full camo sitting on top of a dead log and I pull my crossbow up, I shoot, and the arrow flies over the deer. I was like shocked. What, how could I miss a 20 yard shot? So the next day I go back to the same log and I thought I must have pulled off. And sure enough, within 30 minutes, here comes a buck and he's walking even closer, 15 yards from me. And there is the perfect shot. There's the buck, a nice eight point. I shoot and it grazes his back and smashes into a tree with a loud thud. The buck takes off and I am totally devastated. I was like, you don't, I mean, those kinds of shots you don't miss. I remember so feeling so discouraged going home to the, to the house. And I walked in the kitchen, I said, Trenda, I don't know what's going on. Two perfect shots, we sowed our seed, the deer are right there in front of me, right on time. And she says, is your bow sighted in? It hadn't even dawned on me that the bow might not be sighted in because I had sighted the bow in at the beginning of season. So I went into the backyard, I set a milk jug out on the lawn and I shot the bow and I was surprised. The arrow flies 10 yards off from the milk jug. I shot it several times and then I knew. And then I remembered getting out of the tree when I was target practicing, I'd accidentally knocked my bow over and apparently had knocked the sights off. You know, something I didn't know was the reason for my failure. God had done his part. I had released my faith for the deer, and there it was right in front of me. I had the equipment, I had the deer in the right spot, but nothing. You know, I get so many emails from people that ask me questions all the time. Why isn't it working? We have to look at this principle of preparation. Let me read a scripture to you out of Luke chapter five, where we find Peter, James and John fishing as Jesus meets them along the seashore. And let me begin in verse number one. One day as Jesus was, was uh, standing by the lake there with people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Please note that. They were washing their nets. They fished at night, they were done fishing, and they were washing their nets. Otherwise, the water would have caused it to rot. So you know the story. Jesus uses Peter's boat. He goes out, and at, when he's out, after he's taught, he tells Peter to drop his nets. So after they dropped the nets, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So Peter signaled his partners who came out and helped him haul the, the, the harvest, the fish in, and they'd caught two loads of fish so great that the boats about sank. Now, that's an incredible story. A harvest so large that two boats about sank. Peter was so astonished by the catch, he left everything to follow Jesus. But here's the amazing principle that you need to understand. What would have happened if they were not disciplined to wash their nets? What would have happened, the, the Bible says their nets about broke. It didn't say they did break. The fact that they took care of their nets, they understood the principle of preparation, anticipation, anticipating a harvest. They prepared themselves for the harvest. But if they had not done that, friend, the story would have never happened. Even though Jesus was there, even though the fish were there, their nets would not have been able to pull the fish into the boat. 
Well, after I missed those two deer, I re-sighted my bow wind, re-sowed my seed, and went out the next day, and within 20 minutes, I had my buck. An amazing story, an amazing conclusion, but an amazing lesson. You know, I get emails a lot from people that ask me this question, Pastor Gary, why don't I prosper? What, why aren't things working? And as I decipher through the email, it is such, well, bad English, misspelled words that I would say, I can very easily see why you're having some problems. You see, we have to do our part. God does his part, but our preparation is just as important. We find David, King David, as a shepherd, you know, he's watching his father's sheep, but he was diligent and he was faithful to the point of taking the bear and the lion on, risking his life, which prepared him to take on Goliath. Every story of success, you may see it pop up like someone all of a sudden, wow, they had success, amazing. I would like that success. But what you don't see is behind the scenes of the time and season of preparation. My friend, that is a very, very important time. Now here in just a minute, we're gonna sight my bow in because it's, it's hunting season. I have not been out yet, but it's hunting season and I'm about ready to get out there, but I've learned my lesson. I'm not just taking that great bow out into the woods today and just say, hey, I'm gonna get a deer with it. Oh no, I'm gonna make sure that I'm, you know, I'm good with it, that I have my part down, that the bow is ready to function, it's sighted in, and I've practiced enough to feel confident that I can handle that moment of harvest when it comes by. Let me say this to you as well. Do you remember the story of Peter when he had taxes owed and Jesus said, go catch a fish? Well, Peter knew exactly how to catch a fish. That's an amazing thing. Jesus asked Peter to do something he knew how to do. Go catch a fish, take a line, go to the lake, catch the first fish, and in its mouth, you'll find the coin. You know, an idea, a direction is our answer. You know, you have to remember that the Holy Spirit gives us ideas of direction, concepts, but we are the ones that have to walk it out. We're the ones that have to actually go to the lake, catch the fish, get the coin, or go out into the woods. You know, if I sat in my bedroom all night and said, thank you, Jesus, that my deer, I have my deer, I've, I, by faith, I have my deer, and I laid in my bed, and I just thank God that I had my deer, what is the chances of that deer showing up? I would say probably not much because no self-respecting deer is gonna walk into my bedroom. I have to go to where the deer are at, at the right season when it's legal, with the right equipment and with understanding of when the deer move, their habits, and my positioning to actually intercept and harvest that deer. Faith hunt. Faith hunt requires God's participation, our participation, but it requires also our participation previous to the actual event called preparation. A very, very, very key component to walking in the good life and having everything God says is yours. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.